Good morning, Christian Life Center. Have we come to bless the Lord in this place this morning? Let's stand up to our feet as we begin to sing praises to Him. Can we put our hands together like this? We bless your name, Jesus. Come on, let's sing this together. I want to sing. I want to sing a new song. Shout it out loud. Shout it out. your voice begin just to thank him in this place for being the great I am the king of kings and lord of lords why don't you just lift your voice all over this place begin to thank him this morning father you are worthy to be praised you are great and greatly to be praised your praise will ever be on my mouth 
ever be in my lips. The scripture says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. You believe that, church? Let's sing this verse together. It just says, that your love is devoted like a ring of solid gold, like a vow that is tested, like a covenant of old. And your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon with mercy for today. Faith for you have been and faith for you will be. You pledge yourself to me and that's why I sing your praise will never be on my lips. Can we lift that up this morning? Let's sing your praise will never be on my lips. Never be on my lips. That's our song this morning. Sing your praise will never be on my lips. Be on my I said, lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. If you believe that today, go ahead and just lift your voice. Begin just to worship Him right now. Father, you are worthy. You are holy, Lord. We lift your name in this place. God, we came this morning, Lord, to acknowledge your name in the house of the Lord. We were glad when they said to us can gather in the house of the Lord to worship you in the splendor of your holy name. Let's sing this verse. You father the orphan and your kindness makes us whole and you shoulder our weakness and your strength becomes our own. Now you're making me like you. You're clothing me in white, bringing beauty for ashes. For you have your bride, yes, free of all her guilt and rid of all her shame and known by her true name. And that's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my your praise will ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. 
There's a word in that song, a specific word says worthy. Is your God worthy of your worship this morning? Worthy, I mean really worthy. Worship is worth-ship. We think about who he is and we think about all he deserves from us, the air that we breathe, the songs that we sing, our families, every entire aspect of what we exist for, he's worthy of. So I want to encourage you this morning, if you feel free, if you feel comfortable, if you want to raise your hands, feel free. But I want to challenge us to, 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 to move in action this morning. Take your eyes off of the screen. If you want to close your eyes, feel free to do so. But God is worthy this morning. Worthy enough for you to With angels and saints, we sing, we sing, we sing. We join angels this morning, Lord. Can we sing? You will. Sing, you will be praised. You will. You will. You will be praised. Angels, we sing, we sing. Can we lift it up this morning? Sing, you will be praised, will be praised.
great are you. Someone needs to sing that. Sing song, great. Great are you. The greatness of our God this morning. Sing great are you. Great, great. Scripture says the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Sing great, great, sing. sing. Let's just keep singing that in this place. He inhabits the praises of his people. We sing great are you, Lord. Great, great. Yes. Yes, church. We sing great, sing great, sing great. With your breath, with the air you breathe, sing great. In every season. Focus on his greatness, sing great. Every knee must bow and confess the greatness of our God, sing great. Just one more time, we sing great. It's your breath, it's your breath, it's your breath, it's your breath. you to understand and I want you to realize that in this moment, God's greatness inhabits the praises of his people. So right here, right now, I want you to be encouraged in this time that when we step into his presence the way we are right here, right now, he hears us. Do you believe that this morning? He hears us. That we can walk into his house and walk into his presence Give him the praise and the honor that is due to him. And he wants to commune with us. He wants to be able to speak with us. He wants us to talk with him and him to talk with us. And it's in those moments that we can say, God, here's what's on my heart. Here's what's going on in my life. God, here's what's been weighing on my mind. Because he cares for you and me. And he wants to hear those things. That's why we take intentional time every single week, like in this moment, and say, God, we want to talk with you. We want to bring our requests to you. We want to be able to know, let you know what's going on in our lives and how we need you to move and to work. Because in this moment is when miracles can happen. It's in this moment and this attitude of expectation that God will move in great ways. And we're going to take time right now to be able to ask God and come to God with our petition and our prayers about what's going on in our life personally, but I'm excited because in this moment, we're also gonna want, want to talk with God and pray over a specific team that is actually going into a missions trip this week. So I'm gonna ask the Vibe team, you guys can please join us on the stage right here, right now. Could you give it up for our amazing young adults that are coming onto the stage right now? And this amazing group here, is going to Los Angeles, California this week. And they're gonna be partnering with an amazing uh, ministry in Los Angeles called the Dream Center LA. 
And what they're going to be doing there is that ministry helps a lot of uh, uh, women that have been dealing uh, in the issues of human trafficking, victims of that. Uh, a lot of homeless uh, individuals in that community. Uh, they do food pantries and a lot of things. They're even doing services out on the street in the different communities in the greater Los Angeles area. And this team has chosen to give their time and their energy to say, I want to make a difference in our country. I want to make a difference in this world. So we want to take a moment and pray over them and pray over their, their going and their coming. And God will bless them in their time. And then when we're done praying for them, we're also going to be praying for the different needs that are in this house. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you to extend your hand towards this team right here, right now. And let's pray God's covering and protection over their life. Come on, we're going to pray this together. So all across this room, let your voice be heard. God is here. He hears us. Come on, let it be a roar of prayer in this place. Father. We believe right here, right now in this moment, Lord, that you're going to be able to lead and guide them in every single way possible. God, I pray right now for this amazing group of young adults that you're going to help them, Lord Jesus, to make a difference in the Los Angeles area, Lord God. We believe, God, that you're going to use them. You're going to provide for them. You're going to give them the strength that is necessary, the anointing that is necessary. God, I pray that you would give them the endurance and the stamina that is necessary. God, I pray that you would give them the wisdom to know what to say, to know what to do, to be your hands and feet extended to that community, Lord God. I pray that they would be able to be the messengers of hope that you've called them to be, to bring it to be able to what they've experienced in their life here in Fort Lauderdale and bring it to Los Angeles. God, I pray that you would help them, Lord God, to bring your love, your goodness, and your grandeur and your splendor to that community, that they are carriers of this light carriers of this message, carriers of your love. So let it be done, Lord God. Bless them, Lord Jesus, and let your will be done in their lives. And Father, we pray right here, right now, for every single person that's in this place and every single person that's watching online. We believe, Lord God, that you are a God that does miraculous things. We believe that you are a God that does impossible things. That even with us, it doesn't seem possible, but with you, you can make a way. So I pray, God, in every single circumstance, every single situation, every need that is represented here in this place and online. I believe right now, Lord God, that you're going to help them and do supernatural things in their life. God, be the God of miracles. Be the God of our faith. Be the God of the impossible and do what needs to be done in our homes. Do what needs to be done in our families. Do what needs to be done in our communities and in our schools and our workplaces. God, do what needs to be done in every single cir circumstance and every situation. We believe that it, you can do it. We have faith in your love. We have faith in your power. We have faith in your grace and in your mercy. So let it be done in our lives. Let it be done in every single circumstance. And above all, God, we want your will to be done in every circumstance. So let it be done. And if you believe that in this place, would you put your hands together and somebody shout amen this morning. Come on, somebody shout amen this morning. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for worshiping and praying with us. You may be seated as the choir continues to minister to us. Amen. We believe God to be a God who is able. Amen. We can worship him because we know that we are victorious in Christ. Can I get a witness in the house? How many know that we can praise God in the midst of trial, in the midst of tribulation? Because we know that he already won the victory. Amen. We can praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, that's why we can sing with our hearts and sing. My hallelujah belongs. To you, yes, God. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. And Lord, we say. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Come on, say it. my hallelujah belongs to you. With all of my heart, I say my hallelujah belongs. 
pray, Lord Jesus, as we continue to offer our lives as living sacrifices, that your name would be glorified in this place, God. We know that there's a, a word you have for us today, God, and our hearts are open and ready to receive that message coming here in a few moments. But I just pray in this moment, God, that we know our soul's purpose is to bring glory to your name, because you deserve it. You deserve our lives, every area of our lives, God. We offer it to you today. Be glorified for the remainder of the service. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Can someone say amen? Can you give him praise just one more time as you're seated in the house of the Lord? Good morning, everyone. So happy to see all of you in the house of the Lord this morning. I'm going to keep this moving uh, because Pastor Tom does have a very powerful message uh, coming up in just a moment. But what a powerful time of worship this morning. Amen. God is good. God is good. Welcome everyone to Christian Life Center. If you are visiting here for the first time, we also want to welcome you as well. But just before I get to that, I want to welcome those of you who are joining through live stream. We, want to, we don't want to forget about you as well. We hope and pray that you're experiencing what we're experiencing in here. Hopefully one day you can make it out to our service so you can experience what God is doing here uh, at Christian Life Center. But at this time, I want to point our attention to some special guests. If you're visiting here for the first time, can you just give me a wave so we can acknowledge you and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. To show our appreciation of you being here, we have some information we'd like to give you pertaining to our church. Also, a free gift that we'd like to personally place in your hands if you're interested in receiving some more information about our church, as well as receiving that free gift. On your way in, you should have received a bulletin. If you'd please grab the bulletin at this time, inside of the bulletin, there's a connection card that looks a little bit like what's going to pop up on the screen uh, behind me. So if you'd grab that connection card at this time and just print your name and information on it clearly, right? And at the end of the service, if you would head, uh, head out the double doors to your right, there's an open area called the Connection Center. There will be some leaders there and pastors there to greet you and answer any questions you may have, in, have pertaining to Christian Life Center. And in exchange for that card that you're filling out at this time, we'll be able to give you that free gift and some information about our church that I just mentioned. If you do not have a home church, we that you would prayerfully consider making Christian Life Center your home church. We have plenty of room for you and your whole entire family that they can be, uh, be, uh, be able to grow and become who God has called you and them to be. Those of you who are regular attenders and members, also grab the connection card at this time and just print your first and last name on it, letting us know that you're joining us here today. And if there's any changes in your contact information, please make those changes accordingly so that we have the best way of contacting you and letting you know what's going on here at Christian Life Center. Now, just before we move forward, I just have one quick announcement. We have, uh, we're just a few months away from our Christmas production. Anyone been a part of our Christmas production? Make some noise in the house of the Lord. Yep. So we're having a Christmas open house next Tuesday at uh, 7.15 p.m. in the music suite. Um, you, if you are interested in drama or maybe you want to be more behind the scenes helping with stage props or maybe you're interested in dance or media team, any aspect of the arts, we want to invite you to our Christmas open house next Tuesday night. It's going to be in the music suite at 7.15 p.m. Come out to that night so you can see how you can be a part of our Christmas production team of 2018. And I just look forward to uh, connecting with you there. Many of us will be able to be there to let you know how you can serve to help the Christmas production come to life. Now, at this time, those of you who are regular attenders and members, go ahead and pass your connection cards down all the way to the end. In just a moment here, the ushers will grab that. But those of you who are first-time guests, hold on to those cards. Wait to the end of the service to bring it to the Connection Center. We'll be able to greet you. Now, at this time, I want to welcome our senior pastor. Pastor Tom has some announcements for us. Let's welcome our pastor. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. 
And I hope you will be a part of the Christmas production uh, this year. Well, good morning. We've got some great news and some exciting things that are happening around Christian Life Center that we want to share with you uh, today. Around our campus has been some pastoral uh, transitions, and we've added some new pastors to our team. And we'd like to take a few moments and just share with you what's been happening and introduce you to uh, the team that's joined us as well as uh, update you on some of the changes that are being made. So I'd like to invite our pastors to come on up. All of our pastors are going to come up, but I'm going to highlight uh, a few of these changes. Put your hands together as our pastors come. Amen. Well, as our pastors are coming down, I've asked uh, the spouses to uh, join uh, with them. And uh, we're going to just uh, share with you a few things that have been taking place. First of all, I'm going to start with Pastor Kevin and Deborah. Don't you love Pastor Kevin and Deborah? About uh, about a year ago, Pastor Dominique came to us and uh, was feeling the Lord was leading her in this season of life to, you know, uh, to, to take on uh, roles that were much less and, and responsibility. And she was just sensing a transition. And she has since moved out to California. And she's a creative arts uh, pastor out there where she's not overseeing the entire music department. Well, when that happened, uh, immediately I felt in my heart that Pastor Kevin, who had been serving in that department before, but we had asked him to move on to some other areas. In fact, every time I call Kevin, he always, uh, are you going to give me a new job around here? Because we move him all the time. But uh, we called Kevin in and we said, Kevin, during the interim, uh, can you help lead the music department? In fact, I stood before the music team and I said, this is interim. It's not permanent. Well, about a year later, I realized a year later has gone by. A year has gone by. And I called Pastor Kevin in and I said, said, Kevin, we're not looking for anybody else. You're doing a phenomenal job leading uh, the department. You know, how do you feel? And uh, you know, this is a big department. Not only is it the choir and all the, the rhythm team and the singers, it's also overseeing all of the, uh, the different guys that work behind the scenes and all of the tech side. And uh, so it's a big responsibility. And uh, I said, how do you feel? How are you sensing? They love working with Vibe. That's not going to change. They're going to keep working with Vibe Young Adults. But uh, what we've decided, and Pastor uh, Kevin and Deborah feel this in their heart as well, is we're going to drop the word interim, and Pastor Kevin and Deborah are our music pastors. So put your guests' hands together, yeah. It was maybe a year, year and a half or so ago, Pastor Christian came to me and said, you know, I'm feeling the Lord is shifting some things. And uh, that's the beautiful thing about a large setting is when you feel the Lord shifting, you don't have to leave the church and go to another place. You can try to find, uh, uh, is there a spot there uh, on the local team? And so we began to pray about uh, what God was leading Pastor Christian to. And uh, over the last year and a half, as we've worked through that, we uh, have uh, uh, found, uh, and I'm going to introduce them to you in a moment, uh, uh, we have found uh, uh, Pastor Christian's replacement, so to speak, in the youth department. And I'll introduce you to your new youth pastor in a moment. But Pastor uh, Christian and Danielle, uh, and, and Danielle has just as big of a job as Pastor Christian because she has to keep up with my wife. She works as my wife's assistant. And... Uh, so we're not changing her role, but we're changing his role. And uh, Pastor Christian's going to move into some new areas of ministry uh, for us. First of all, two brand new initiatives that we're real excited about. We didn't say it in the first service, but I'll say it in this service. Is Pastor Christian is going to be uh, helping, first of all, with our couples, all of our marriages. Uh, we're going to develop a more formalized initiative with our couples, ministry uh, to the married couples uh, here in the house, as well as all of you who are single, single 30 and up, single 30 and up, we're going to develop a new initiative there as well. Singles, let me hear it. Yeah. 
So those are two brand new initiatives. Uh, he's going to continue to oversee all of our print communication and all of, uh, all of that that happens uh, in and through uh, Christian Life Center, uh, as well as helping with our different campuses when it comes to the creative elements that we do on all of our campuses. So they're shifting. Someone said when we were introducing a new youth pastor, where is Pastor Christian going? Well, he went down the hall to a different office, and he's going to be carrying new responsibilities. So put your hands together for them. Yeah. Now that brings us to our new youth pastor. Come on over here, Tim. Tim Benitez. Yeah. Tim is a South Floridian, right? Born down here, raised down here. I don't know all the details, but a South Floridian that's coming back home to South Florida. He's been up in Atlanta the last number of years at one of our large, iconic Pentecostal churches uh, called Mount Perrin, uh, Church of God. We won't hold that against him, uh, but uh, uh, he's coming back to the AG, and uh, we're bringing him home. And uh, Tim's coming on back down to be our new youth pastor. And we're excited about that. So Tim joined the team about two weeks ago and they're already running. And uh, when I asked him what the vision was, it slipped out a thousand youth. I'm not gonna hold it against him, but I'm gonna hold him to it. A thousand youth, we're excited to take South Florida, yeah? Tim, welcome buddy, glad you're here. And Tim was working at Mount Perrin with this uh, young lady, Fabiana. Fabiana's not new to Christian Life Center. Her and her husband, about 12 years ago, served on our team. Her husband was the children's pastor about 12 years ago. And then the Lord, right? Children, middle school, right? Well, we've got so many pastors, I can keep all of it, but middle school, okay, for about a year, and then they moved up to Faith in Atlanta and different places, and they were serving together in Mount Perrin, and uh, we had the opportunity uh, for her to come and, and be a part of our team as well. So Fabiana uh, is going to be uh, our uh, youth associate pastor, uh, working with Tim and, um, and Angel's our middle school director. They're going to be working together, and we're excited for that whole team that we've got right now. So Tim will be our, our uh, senior youth uh, pastor. Fabiano will be our youth pastor assistant. And uh, Angel, many of you know, is our middle school uh, director. Which leads us to our final couple I want to introduce you to. This is David and Michelle. Now, I'm going to try to say their last name. I don't even know if I'm going to get it totally right. But David and Michelle, let me just give a little background, were missionaries, missionaries with the Assemblies of God in Europe with Pastor Candy and I. They were serving in Poland, which is the link to their last name, right? Polish last name. They were serving there, and we did many things together and missions together up there. And about five or six years ago, actually, when they were still missionaries, they came. They actually presented their ministry here. We took an offering. And when they were leaving, I remember Candy and I were driving down the road. And Candy said, I would love for them to be on our team. They would fit our team so well. And, uh, well, fast forward five years, things began to shift for them. They came back to the States a few years ago. They were in California working with the district of the Assemblies of God there, uh, helping in the area of discipleship and spiritual formation and evangelistic training in churches. And and uh, we began the sense that, uh, uh, that we were, as we were expanding, we were trying to catch up with that growth. We were sensing that David and Michelle would be great for our team. So I reached out to them. And it's been a two-year conversation, actually. It's been a two-year conversation. And in November of last year, I called David and I said, okay, this is the time. This is it. If it's going to happen, now is the moment. And they're going to be joining our team, working in the area of discipleship, uh, growth groups, spiritual spiritual formation. That's their heart, their passion, and uh, we're excited that they're joining our team. Now, their last name, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to get it exact right, Lewandowski? Lou, Lou, like Lou, the name. Lewandowski. Say it with me. Hey, we're good. Yeah, we got it. It's on our mouths. Lewandowski, uh, David and Michelle Lewandowski. Put your hands together for them. Yeah. We are excited to have all of the pastors with us. We have a phenomenal 
pastoral team on all of our campuses, campus pastors. We have about 15 full-time pastors with us and they serve you well. And you can be blessed. You can be, uh, you can, you know, you can just take confidence and uh, encouragement that these pastors are praying for you. They're standing with you. They're there to care for you. We visit people uh, daily in the hospital every week. Somebody uh, is uh, on pastor on call and we're visiting, we're walking the journey with you and we're helping to shepherd and care for you. And that's what you've asked. That's what you need. That's what God has called us to do. And I'm excited that these pastors have joined the team. I'd like to pray a prayer blessing over them. Would you stretch your hands out towards our pastoral uh, team here? Father, we thank you for each and every one of these pastors for their calling. I thank you, Father, for the gifts that you've given to them. For some that have been here many years and are shifting roles to others that are just joining us, we thank you, God, that you've brought together the team for such a time and for such a season. And we thank you, Father, what you will continue to do. And we know, God, that you have great plans for Christian Life Center. We wanna make a greater impact for your kingdom and for your glory. And I pray, God, that your favor will be on them and will be upon us. In your name we pray, amen and amen. I failed to do one thing, and that is I failed to introduce your husband. Chris was not able to be with us today. He is also a minister, uh, as we shared. He was doing a wedding that was prearranged. I want to show you a picture of Chris right there. Uh, that's uh, her uh, husband, uh, Chris and Pastor Fabiana. Put your hands together for our team. Glory, glory, glory. Now, we want you to greet one another. Would you stand together? Let's take the next 90 seconds and welcome one another. Life can seem like the sea, restless, unstable, and sometimes dangerous. And we can feel like ships being tossed by the wind, subject to its drifts, currents, and waves. Jesus said it best, in this world you will have trouble, but even in a world full of trouble, God has given us truth as an anchor for our soul. An anchor we can use to ride out the storms of life. That anchor is His Word. It's His Word of truth that anchors our hearts and minds in a world filled with chaotic waves that try to make us drift. In calm waters, we don't need an anchor. But when situations become dangerous, an anchor is essential. We can look to God's Word and find that His anchor is the only true anchor that keeps us firm against adverse winds and immovable in times of storm. It keeps us secure, stable,
Anchor. We're pretty excited about this upcoming sermon series called Anchored. It's part of our spiritual, our fall spiritual growth campaign where we as a church body come together as one community and get focused on one particular study. This time, more than anything else, we wanted to bring a study to keep God's people anchored. We live in a troubled world, a t world of trials and storms in our personal lives, in our, in our communities. We look around, we watch the news, we see what's happening, and God is looking for his people, and he has equipped his people to be anchored and firm in a time of trial. How many of you want to be anchored no matter what season you're going through? And so we're going to be giving you more information on that in the coming weeks. This is a time where we are part of a life group where we unpack that study. So I want you to prepare your hearts to be a part of the life group. But there's a familiar text um, in scripture. If the um, red carpet team can come forward at this time. As we continue in our worship through the, um, our tithes, well, God's tithes and our offering, I want to anchor it on a particular scripture as we prepare to give. It's a familiar text, and the man who wrote it is very familiar to all of us. It's David, King David, who was once a shepherd boy. He says in Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not be in lack. Two things that David is stating here is that the God of the universe, the one who created the sun, the moon, and the stars, the, the creator of creation, who breathes out stars and calls them by name. Not only is he the God of the universe, but that God is my shepherd. That God is my Lord. And not only that, he's my shepherd, but he will make sure, this great and mighty God will make sure that my life will not be in any lack. That everything concerning my life, that every area concerning my life, he will fill in the spaces in my life, the gaps in my life. How many of you want God to fill in the gaps? That there will be no lack concerning your life. We know in order for that to take place, we must walk in obedience. The scripture tells us that those who are willing and obedient shall eat from the good of the land. That everything that you need, if you are willing and obedient, God will make sure that your crops yield for you. That everything that you touch yield for you. In the job, in the area of your finances, promotions, the student grants, all those things, the investments, your, your business, all those things. He will make sure that there is an increase over your life. But, people of God, we must do our part. And that is to walk in obedience. So at this time, our worship is our obedience unto the Lord. It's not a one-time thing. It is not a time that we just give during an offering. It's not that time I remember when I used to tithe. The thing is, obedience is an ongoing lifestyle unto the Lord. And so as you hold your gift in your hand to give to the Lord, it belongs to him, you know that, right? As you hold that in your hand, some of you have given through text. We have all sorts of people that are seated in this congregation. Those who are electronically given, so they give by way of text. Those who give by their uh, cash or checks, there is an offering envelope in the rack in front of you. Some of you are online and you're watching online and you're giving through our website. You're giving using our app. The, the method is not the issue. It's hearts that are obedient unto the Lord. That's what God is looking for. It's not how much money you have. It's what you do with the money that you do have. And in this case, we want to honor God. We want to worship God by giving him his first, the best. It belongs to him. Hold your devices if you're giving electronically. Hold your giving if you're giving check cash. Those that are watching on the other end of the screen, I want you to stretch your hand forward. And I want us to go to the Lord in prayer. I want to pray over this house that there will be no lack. I want to speak to the devourer that comes to steal and rob from you. I want to speak to the locust worm and the canker worm and ask the Lord to demolish it, to crush it over your life. 
that there will be no poverty in your life concerning your children, concerning your household. We want to speak a curse to the one who comes to curse. That the thing that he's putting up against you, God will circumvent his plans over your life. But we must walk in obedience and God will push back the locust worm. How many want that in their lives? Let's give. Father, look across this room as your sons and daughters are walking in obedience. On the other end of the screen, as those that are taking this step, simple step of obedience, to honor you in everything, in all that they have, Lord. They wanna make sure that they honor you first. They wanna make sure that they give to you first. Now, Lord, as they walk in obedience, would you open up the floodgates over their lives? Open up the floodgates over their jobs. Open up the floodgates over their business, over their investments, over their, their grants. Lord, unemployment, Lord, I pray that you would open up doors of opportunity for them to walk through. Let them not look be looked over for the promotion. I pray that their resume will go on the right table at the right time in the right office to give them the promote. Lord, favor your people as they walk in obedience. Pour out blessings that they don't even have room to contain it. Let it flow over from their lives, Lord. Why? Because they're walking in obedience. And your word says that you would watch over it to perform it in our lives. That if we are willing and obedient, we will eat from the good of the land. Perform your word now in our lives. We honor you, Lord, and we love you. And in the act of our love, we walk in obedience. In Jesus' name, all God's people believe that and said, amen and amen. Let's give. jump in our sermon series right away. Uh, we're going to open up the Word. Take your Bibles and uh, turn with me to Malachi chapter 3. That'll be where we're at. We're going to look at our key verse though in Proverbs 21 and verse 5 in just a moment. I hope you're a note taker. We have uh, notes for you in your bulletin or on our CLC app and I would love for you to follow along and take notes uh, today. Today we continue financial fitness. Today we're going to be looking at the secrets to financial freedom. It's been said money is fun, but I would add if you have some. Can I hear an amen? Money's fun if you have some, uh, but the reality is there are some principles. Money has rules and principles, and we have to learn what they are. Now, financial fitness. We've been liking this to physical uh, fitness. I'm going to walk back here, and I'm going to grab the weights back here. Let me grab uh, Pastor Christian's weight first, you know, and uh, this is Pastor Christian's, and uh, then here's mine, right? This is what I work out with. Now, someone said last week, Pastor, yours isn't real. Oh, yeah? That baby's real. 
So I'm going to work out Pastor Christian's weight a little bit. Just as physical fitness and health has rules and principles, so does your finances. Financial fitness is about knowing the rules. It's about understanding the principles. And when you do, it begins to bring peace in your life. Peace and stress-free living Peace is an abundant life that God has for you. And so today we're going to be looking at these secrets. You see, the reality is money is not evil. In fact, the Bible says that, that, that money's not evil, but it's the love of money that's evil and is the trap. When we love money, we pursue it, we chase it. We're going to see in our scriptures today, it leads into all kinds of trouble. Money is a tool, just like tools uh, uh, can be very, very uh, effective when we understand how to use those tools. Money's like a tool, and when you learn to use it properly, it can be very, very powerful. But if you don't use a tool properly, it can become very dangerous. And the same is true with your money, with your finances. So we're going to begin uh, digging deeper on this. If you haven't had an opportunity to be with us on Wednesday night, let me say that all of our Wednesday night seminars are online. You can go, you can click on it, download uh, the, the MP3 there. If there was notes, we have those notes posted. We would love for you to join us on Wednesday night where we take the principles that we're talking talking about here on a Sunday morning, and we dive it deeper, giving you the tools, helping you understand how to use the tools, and uh, uh, giving you exercise things, so to speak, that will help build your financial fitness for your life. So that is online. On the back of your bulletin, list the three classes, or I should say the back of your outline, list the three classes that we're going to be having this coming Wednesday night. I would love for you to be with us. Now, as I jump into the Word today, let's just ask God's blessing on His Word. Father, I thank you for your anointed, powerful word. And as we open it today, I pray that you'll speak to our hearts, speak to our lives. I pray, God, you'll illuminate it and enable us to understand with great revelation your word so that we can walk in obedience to you. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Proverbs 21 in your outline is our key verse. We looked at it several times last week. Let's say it together. Say it loud with me. Say, good planning. Oh, no, you can do better than that. Let's do it again. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. But it goes on to say that hasty shortcuts lead to poverty poverty. So we put this to a little equation to help you to understand it. Look on the screen here. It says good planning plus hard work equals prosperity. And that's what we're going to be talking about is how do we continue to plan? How do we continue to build in the discipline? That's the hard work. Someone said to me in between services, it's smart work too. And that's true. When, when we put good planning with hard work, it leads to prosperity. What's prosperity? Well, prosperity is peace in your life. Prosperity is stress-free when it comes to your finances. Prosperity is that you have more than enough. There's more than enough to provide for your family. You're not worrying about what you're going to eat. You're not worrying about, can you pay the electric bill? prosperity is that there's more than enough. And that's what we're praying for. That kind of peace, that's what we're trying to help you get to, that kind of stress-free, financial-free living. And I believe that with this kind of equation that we're looking at, that good planning and hard work will bring peace, prosperity in your life. But the opposite, you've got to understand. The other side of that equation, it says is no planning plus shortcuts will equal poverty. What is poverty? There's not enough. Poverty is you don't know where the, where you don't know where you're going to get what you need. The car breaks down, something happens, the toilet uh, uh, begins to get clogged, something's, uh, you know, gotten broken. And the problem is, is no plan in taking shortcuts, trying to live like the world means it's going to be poverty. Poverty is there's not enough. 
Now, 73% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. That's not peace. That's not prosperity. And when the next crisis comes, before you know it, you're living in a place of poverty. Now, you may not be completely broke. You may not, you know, be, you know, getting kicked out of your house. But poverty is where there isn't stress. You don't know what's going to meet your needs. And you're living under that uh, hand to mouth, that, that, that paycheck to paycheck mentality. And so we're going to continue to unpack and help you to understand it. Now, there's three attitudes about debt that cause debt, three attitudes that cause debt that you've got to know and be aware of, or you're going to get caught in a trap because one of the rules about money, remember money has rules, and one of those rules is you can't spend more than you make. You can't spend more than, than what's coming in. If you've got more outgo than you've got income, you're going to be led into poverty. No planning plus shortcuts leads to poverty. So one of the attitudes that causes debt is impulse spending. Write it down. Impulse spending. Impulsive spending. Now, it's very difficult to control our urges and our desires. And especially when we get so much bombarding us. This week, perfect timing, in the mail, I got this big, beautiful envelope. It came from uh, Capital One. I'll, I'll mention it. It came from Capital One. And, uh, and it is a spark. You know, it, it sparked my, it was actually called the spark card. It sparked my interest. And so I opened it up, beautiful, uh, big design. And, and as I opened it, I opened the first page. They caught me right away, a cup of cappuccino. I mean, you're talking about catching my attention. There it is, that cup of cappuccino. But then it says unlimited. Say unlimited. Unlimited 1.5% cash back. That's a good deal, 1.5% cash back. I turn the next page and it says, your unlimited passion deserves unlimited rewards. Get approved, and you'll, uh, and you'll see unlimited, really unlimited means unlimited rewards. And so it's catching you, and you begin to walk through it. And I mean, they're just feeding the human desire for more. It says, always on the job for you. They're working for us always. They, 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 they'll help coordinate trips, book hotel rooms, you know, assess, uh, uh, assessing car limo services worldwide, help with reservations at hotels and restaurants, even helping buy gifts for your loved one. I mean, that this is a pretty good deal right here. It says, uh, bottom line is it's the card that uh, has been specifically designed to enhance your life. Now, the problem is it sounds good, doesn't it? But what it does is it leads to impulsive spending. Look what Jesus says about that. Matthew chapter 6, in your outline, verse 19. Matthew 6, 19 from the Message Bible says, Don't hoard treasures down here. Why? Because when you hoard it down here, it, it gets eaten by moth and corroded by rust, or worse, stolen by burglar. So Jesus is saying, don't hoard treasures. What's hoarding treasures? Impulsive buying, buying things impulsively, accumulating, getting more and more. He says instead, stockpile treasures in it. Why? Because it's safe from moth and rust and burglars. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place where, uh, where you will most want to be and end up being. See, now this is the deal. Here's the reality, is we're living in two kingdoms. We're living in the kingdom of God as believers, but we're also living in the kingdom of this world. But the reality is you can only be ruled by one of them. Who is going to rule your heart? Who's going to have the priority of your life? Who's going to, who's going to have, if it would be, your true passion? You see, we live in the world, but the Bible says you're not to be of the world. Yes, we're in this world, and this world has a value system that's different than the value system of God. But I'm here to tell you that God's strength and power in you will give you a strength and an anointing and an empowerment to overcome the values of this world and live with a different value system, and that's the value system of God and His kingdom. And every weekend when we come in here, what are we doing is we're learning 
about the values of God's kingdom. We're aligning our hearts to God's values, to God's kingdom. And we're saying, God, we want you to be the priority of my heart and my life. And that's the reality is that you've got a battle. And the battle is who's going to rule your heart. Who's going to be on the throne of your heart? Who are you going to give your passions to? But when you determine that you're going to allow God's kingdom to rule your heart, some things begin to change in your life. And how you handle your money reveals volumes, volumes about your priorities, volumes about your loyalties, volumes about your affections. If I were to do an audit of your bank account, the audit of your bank account would show where your priorities are, where your loyalties are, where your affections are. It would show. And that's why God says, and that's why we looked at it last week, is that there are, there are two value systems. There's the world's pattern, and then there's God's pattern. If you follow the world's pattern, it's going to tell you, you can have unlimited passion. You can fulfill your passions. I mean, and every desire you have, you can fulfill it. But what it's going to do is it's going to lead you into bondage. It's going to lead you into trap. It's going to lead you into a place that before you know it, you were saying that you're a believer, but the values of God have not been imprinted over your heart. This is what Paul says about that. In Philippians chapter 2, in verse 3, Paul says, don't be selfish. Selfish living is following the patterns of this world. We looked at it last week. Paul says, don't be selfish. Don't live to make a good impression. That's impulsive spending. You're spending to make a good impression, to pursue selfish ambition, selfish desires. He says, don't live to make a good impression on others. No, instead, be humble. He says, be humble, uh, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't just think about your own affairs, but be interested in others too and what they are doing. The issue here is really discipline. We talked about it last week. It's learning self-control. It's learning to say no. It's learning to understand that there's a world pattern and I don't want to get caught in it and I'm going to say no to it. So one of the attitudes that leads to debt that you've got to fight is impulsive spending. A second attitude is I deserve it. I deserve it. I worked for it. I earned it. It's my money. Who cares what I do with it? I deserve it. Well, Paul talks about this in 1 Timothy chapter 6. Paul says to young Timothy, true godliness with contentment. I'll talk about contentment in a moment. Is it is itself great, uh, uh, great wealth. After all, we, bought no, we brought nothing with us uh, when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. And he goes on to say, uh, uh, so if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. Verse 9, but people who long to get rich, I deserve it. Impulsive spending. They long to get rich, fall into a a temptation, and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires, harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. So this attitude of entitlement, it's really greed. That's where it's, it's rooted. And we looked last week that the solution to this is sacrifice. That I learned to say no. I learned to wait. That, that I learned to control these urges. And the third attitude that we've got to be aware of that leads to debt is the attitude of spend it all mentality. I get paid and and I'm going to spend it all. Remember our key verse, good planning plus hard work leads to prosperity. But a spend it all mentality just spends whatever I get. Proverbs 21, 20 says this, look in your outline, the wise have wealth and luxury, but fools, who's a fool? A fool is someone that spends it all. A fool is someone that, that, that buys impulsively. A fool is the one that says, I deserve it. And they just go out and they take it on debt. They do whatever they want. A fool spends whatever they get. But the wise are going to have wealth 
and luxury. You see, the issue really is a lack of knowledge here. There's no planning. Good planning plus hard work equals prosperity. Now, I want to encourage you. I want to make this spiritual for a moment. And that is I want to challenge you above your normal uh, your normal expenses for electricity, uh, you know, your rent or mortgage payment, your normal expenses that you may have on car or insurance or whatever your normal expenses are, I want to challenge you to pray before you pay. Say it with me. Pray before you pay. Pray before you pay. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, I want to challenge you beyond your normal operating budget to pray before you pay. If something costs maybe $250, why don't you pray? Maybe pray three days, five days uh, about that before you pray. Well, why would I do that? Well, because we have to realize that we're living in a world and those world values are trying to squeeze you into its mold. And we, all of us, are fighting to live according to God's value and God's principles. So when you pray before you pay, what you're doing is you're giving God an opportunity to align your values. Wow, man, you just ruined this sermon. <laughs> Pray before you pay. Maybe if it's $250 uh, or under, pray about it for three days. Maybe if it's $500 to $1,000, why don't you pray about it for a week? Begin to pray. Now, I'm not saying it's not God's will. I'm not saying that God may not want you to have it. But before you go out and, and buy this or buy that or do this or do that, why don't you pray about it? If it's $500 to $1,000, now your numbers may change. I don't know, maybe lower, maybe higher. But pray before you pay it allows God to begin to come in and bring you totally into alignment. Maybe if it's over $1,000, maybe you should pray about it for a month before you buy the new car, before you sign the dotted line, before you take on that indebtedness. If it's over $1,000, maybe you ought to pray for a month. Now, oh, pastor, you just went and got all spiritual on me. Well, that's true, but we're living in a world and the world's plan is going to squeeze us in its mold. And we said last week, it takes a change in perspective. It's a crazy attitude change that says, I'm going to be different. The world is broke and God doesn't want me to be broke. He wants me to live in prosperity. Prosperity is peace. Peace means there's more than enough. And so I want to come into alignment with God. Can I hear an amen? amen. Now, one final thing, pray before you pay. One final thing on that is, let me just say, if you're married in the house, why don't you set a number and you determine that you're not going to spend that amount above that amount without talking to your spouse first? Uh, it got quiet in here there. <laughs> now, pastor, that's just not fair. <laughs> pastor, you just ruined this sermon. You know, you know, he's out of his mind. You know, well, let me tell you, if you talk to your spouse first and then you can come into alignment, it'll help you have God's perspective. Pastor Kenny and I did this early in marriage. We said it was going to be $100, right? $100 or more. Now, I'm not talking about normal, you know, normal operating. Pay that electric bill, you know, you know, pay. It. Don't get those lights shut off. I'm not talking about your normal operating expenses. I'm talking about you go to the mall, you go to the store, you see that advertisement on TV, you see this that entices you and pulls you. Talk to your spouse first. Now, we decided it was going to be $100, right, honey? She shook her head. I, there was many days I wish it was actually a little lower than $100, but it was $100. And, uh, and we've tried to follow that all these years, haven't we? You know, we'll try to talk to each other first, you know, you know, and yeah, sometimes, you know, flat screen TVs show up at the house that we didn't expect to have, right? You know, but if we would talk to one another, we would pray, you know, pray three days, right? If it's under a certain amount, pray for a week if it's in the range, pray for a month if it's over, you'll break impulsive spending, you'll break spend it all mentality, and you'll begin to live by a different set of rules. So today, here we go. We want to talk about three secrets to financial freedom. The first secret is put God first. Say, put God first. Say it again. Put God first 
in my finances. You see, you can't honor God and get God's blessing if you're not putting God first. In Deuteronomy 14, 23, it talks about the tithe. It says the purpose of the tithe is to teach you to always put God first in your life, that He is your priority. Why is this important? It's because the battle again is for your heart. The values of this world, the, the, the God of this world, the enemy himself, his values are pulling at your heart. And the challenge is, is yes, we live in the world. We live in this world. And, and these values of the world are all around us. But we're not going to be controlled by these values. That we're going to be different. Can I hear an amen? amen? Everybody else is broke, but we're living with prosperity, which is peace in our life because we bought into a different value system. But it's a battle for our heart. In fact, the Bible, we read it earlier. Jesus said, where your heart is, there your treasure is. Where your heart is, your treasure will be. And, and Jesus wanted us to understand that where your treasure is going, where your finances is going, so is your heart going. If your finances are going one way, your heart is going to follow that. And that's why you've got to guard your heart and you've got to determine God is going to be the priority. I'm going to put God first. In fact, Jesus depicts in his word that if we put land and jobs and possessions and, and things of this world, our bank accounts, all the accolades of this world, if we put that first, it's a short-sighted mentality. It's a short-sighted vision. That's why he says we've got to see that our treasure is getting stored up in heaven where moth and rust and, and robbers and thieves can't steal it. Our treasure is somewhere where we can't lose the reward. It's an eternal investment. And that's why Jesus says you've got to have a different perspective. So tithing is God's plan. Tithing is a way to keep our focus off of the values of this world and to keep our focus on the values of the kingdom of God. It really is a part of my spiritual testimony. It's a part of my spirit. The problem is debt is not a money issue. Debt is a spiritual issue because the values of this world have pressed me down a path and that path has, inbound, has, has bound me and has binded me to where now I can't break, three, uh, break free. We have a membership class that we call DNA membership. In every membership class, I always get asked the question, what is tithing? Well, tithing in its simplest form, you may want to write it on the side of your notes, in the simplest form, tithing is returning, returning the first 10% of all of our income to God through his local church. It's returning, say returning. It's returning the first 10% of our income to, uh, to, to God. It's, it's tithing back what God has given to us. That's what 10%, a tenth portion means. It's giving to God in God's house. In fact, I ask you to turn to Malachi. We're going to read it in just a moment. And in Malachi, it talks about the storehouse. Now, the storehouse is where we would come to receive our spiritual food, so to speak. It's where we worship together. It's where we serve together. It's where we journey in relationships and life together. And it's powerful when we understand what God is teaching in Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. I asked you to turn there. Malachi chapter 3. I want to share with you a few powerful secrets of tithing that comes out of Malachi chapter uh, 3. Look here in verse 10. It says, bring all the tithes, not a part of it, not just a portion of it, but bring all of the tithe, that's a tenth, the first tenth that comes back to God, into the storehouse. The storehouse is that place where we're being fed, where, where we're being ministered to. Bring it all to the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of the heavens, the, the Lord of heaven's armies, I, if you return the first tenth of all income to my storehouse so there's enough food in my house, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great that you won't have enough room to take it in. And then God says, try it. 
test me on this. Put me to the test. Now here, when God says, bring the tithe to the storehouse, the tithe provides for the work of the kingdom of God. It's to provide for the kingdom of God being expanded. It's to provide for the care of the body of Christ. It's to provide for ministry to the body, to, pro to provide, uh, 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 if it would be, training and equipping for your children, to provide uh, training and equipping for you and, and for me, that we would have a spiritual place that we could gather and we could worship God together and we could strengthen our faith and, and we could look out and expand the mission of what God wants us to do in our community. The tithe provides for that. The tithe doesn't belong in missions. The tithe doesn't go to kingdom builders. The tithe doesn't go to television evangelists or evangelists that come into town. The tithe comes to the storehouse so that God says there'll be enough food in my house for my house to do what I've called them to do. Now just imagine, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe with me for a moment, if every believer everyone that called themselves a Christian would obey God and what God is saying, God says there would be more than enough to expand my kingdom and to do my work. When I begin to dream about that, I begin to think about it and I begin to think, wow, if everyone was walking in obedience, if everybody chose to honor God like this, what we as a church could do in this community. I guarantee you, we wouldn't be on four campuses. We'd have six or seven campuses. We would reach all of Broward County. I begin to think about the number of missionaries and missions trips that could continue to go out if everyone was walking in obedience. The outreach programs, the impact on our community, your children, my children, our ministry together. God has blessed us and we're seeing great fruit. But imagine the greater impact for the kingdom of God, what this verse is talking to you and I. He says, the, the Lord of the armies of heaven says, I will open the heavens of window, uh, the, uh, the windows of heaven and I will pour down a great blessing upon you. Now, for me, that's where we begin to realize that we're going to walk in, we're going to walk in God's blessing. So, one of the powerful truths of tithing is that I receive God's blessing in a great way when I obey him with the tithe. We had a young couple in our congregation that took this challenge, took it serious, and I want you to hear their testimony and what God has done in their life when they took this challenge. Look up on the screen. Hi, my name is Amanda Small. And I am Kanata Small. And we are the Smalls. Smalls. Yes. <laughs> so we want to share a little bit about our story from last year with the Tithe Challenge. We were challenged um, in some ways um, as a, individuals and as couple as a couple yeah. um, with what we were doing. And so, um, yeah. Uh, we just made a conscious decision um, probably a year before, and then this this uh, reinforced it. Uh, and we were giving 10%, uh, you know, the normal 10% of my normal uh, salary and then 20% of my commission. I work at a job where I get commission, I get a, a regular salary. I walked into work one day. Um, I was a senior account executive. They called me into the office uh, with no real reason other than, um, you know, they just needed to fill the position because we were bought out by another company. Um, they demoted me, you know, so I went from making a certain amount of money to getting a demotion. Uh, and it was very confusing, very discouraging. Again, it wasn't like I did anything. I was still top uh, in my company, um, but I was the newest. Um, but, you know, we continued to pay the 20% off of the uh, commission and 10% off of my salary. And uh, sure enough, you know, the way God is, uh, it's like we didn't miss a beat. Um, so much so that at the end of the year, we looked at our taxes and um, I didn't even realize it, but I ended up making more money um, <laughs> that year than I did the, the year before when I had a higher paying salary. So in the midst of this, we bought a home. We were able to buy a house, but not only were we able to buy a house, we actually were able to buy a house. God gave us a house that initially we thought was completely out of our price range. Um, and we had looked over at tons of houses and the one house that God gave us peace about was way more 
than what we were expecting to pay. And through the process, um, we just prayed, God, you know, just give us a piece about it. If this is meant for us to have it, you know, you'll you'll make it happen. Um, and then it was about uh, a month later when we first made our first mortgage payment mm -hmm. is um, I remember calling Kanata and telling him, hey, I made the first mortgage payment. <laughs> and I was celebrating that we had the money to make the mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. But it just felt like such a victory because we trusted God in the process. Yeah. And uh, that same week that I had called my husband to celebrate that we had made the mortgage payment, they called him in the office. And yeah, they called me in the <laughs> office and gave me the speech. You know, we love what you're doing. You. You're such a leader in the middle of everything that was going on. You have a good attitude, so on and so forth. And uh, they promoted me, you know, back to my position as senior account executive. And, uh, you know, salary went up and, you know, I got a team under me and so on and so forth. And I just want to challenge you, you know, in that, you know, we've been able to see God's hand move in every area of my, in our lives, whether mm -hmm. it's been when we had a little or when we've had a lot. Um, but it's all the same. It's really about faithfulness and it's about obedience and trusting God with what he's given you. Because at the end of the day, what we have is not ours. God simply gave it to us to manage it. And so mm -hmm. um, for us, it's really about learning how to manage it well, um, to be good stewards of it and to be able to be um, to meet people's needs. Because that's who we are as believers and as a body is that our role is not only to just have money for ourselves, but to bless other people that need it. And so this has been... You know, it's been a blessing to see and to be able to have our home and to know that we were able to buy a home in the midst of, of a probably time that we could have, you know, got gotten a little discouraged. But God was willing to to honor our faithfulness in giving. And, and we just think it's so exciting because God can use anyone. He, he really doesn't even need us to do it. But he allows us the opportunity to be used, even monetarily. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's as unexplainable. As long as you're willing, as long as you're faithful, and as long as you're obedient, God will use you. Yep, yep. Isn't that cool? A man in Kanata right up here. Thank you guys for sharing your story with us. I will pour out a blessing so great, you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it and put me to the test. I want to challenge you today, if you're not tithing, to do what we call the tithe challenge, and that is to test God with the tithe. Watch and see what God will do. In fact, in your bulletin today is a little card. If everybody would find that card, everyone, even if you're a tither right now, would you find this card? I want you to grab this card, and I want to challenge you to take the tithe challenge. I believe, just like this story that we've heard, that story is going to be your story. After the last tithe challenge that we did, uh, uh, you know, last year, early last year, we've had people that, that have bought houses. We've got people that have gotten out of debt. We have watched people with good planning and hard work begin to walk in the prosperity of what God has. And it starts with putting God first. And when you put God first, it begins to release supernatural blessings blessing in your life. And, and so today, I want to challenge you. If you're not tithing, will you take the tithe challenge? What the tithe challenge is, is that you say, God, for the next 90 days, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to begin to put you first. I'm going to give you the first 10%. I'm going to return it to you, and I'm going to trust you to provide for everything. But, but pastor, I won't be able to pay all my debt and all my needs. And, and what I'm here to tell you today is right now on paper, it may not look like it. Right now on paper, it may not feel like you can do it, but this is what I know is you can't outgive God. And when you begin to honor God and put God first, God begins to bring everything else into alignment. When it doesn't even make sense, when you get demoted and you're going to be making a lot less money than you were making the year before, but you put God to a test and say, I'm going to tithe. And not only that, I'm going to give you 20% of all of my commission. When I begin to honor God like that, God begins to open heaven and you make more money than next year than you made the last year because you're honoring God. That's what God does. And what I'm here to tell you today is you put God first like that and God will 
open those heavens over you. I don't know how it'll look and I don't know how you're gonna uh, rearrange things and begin to get into, uh, get into that place of peace. It's not just gonna fall from heaven. It takes good planning and hard work. He didn't get to quit his job. He still had to work hard. But when you work hard, it opens up the principles of what God will do. And so today, the most important thing for those of you that are not tithing, for those of you that are not giving the full tithe, you've been given a portion of the tithe, but you're not given the full tithe, the most important thing you can do before this sermon is over is to take the tithe challenge. And when I continue to preach today, what I want you to do is I want you to fill this card out and I want you to make a heart commitment. This commitment is a heart commitment to say, God, I'm going to trust you, I'm going to put you to the test, and I'm going to believe that the stories I'm hearing, what pastor's talking about, is going to begin to happen in my life. Yes, I know you're a single mom. Yes, I know it's tough. Yes, I know you don't have a great job, and, and things may not be the way you want it, and you see others, and it's, oh, it's easy for them. Let me tell you, it's not easy for anyone. Everyone has to walk in obedience in this area, but when you do, God promises that the windows of heaven will begin to open up over you. And what I'm going to challenge you, if you're not tithing or you're not giving the full tithe, is in obedience to God, in a, in, you know, in a heart's commitment today, in a covenant with God, fill this card out. At the end of the service, you're going to take this card through the doors. There's a big table in the center of the lobby. You can't miss it. You take this card. You give it to those uh, ladies and those that will be there at that table. And they're going to give you a big packet that we've prepared just for you. In this packet is going to be some tools that are going to help you. You're not tithing. You're not giving the full tithe. You turn this card in. They're going to give you this packet. Probably one of the most important things in this packet that you're going to want to get if you're not tithing, if I can find it in here, is a little book. A little book that I've, I've gotten just for you. It's called The Generosity Ladder. You're going to want to read this book if you uh, are taking this commitment uh, today. So in exchange for your card, they're going to give you this envelope right at the end of the service. Now, as we look at this, let me fill in the last few points and I want to get practical in the final minutes of our message. When you begin the tithe, it releases supernatural blessing over your life. But secondly, what it does is it gives you super supernatural contentment. Say contentment. You get supernaturally content with what you have because you're breaking the pattern of this world and you're walking in accordance to the pattern of the Lord. Look at this verse that's, that's uh, in your outline. It says, a simple life in the fear of God is better than a rich life with a ton of headaches. Can I hear an amen? Because you're going to get content. Content is you're content with what you have. Content is that what you're getting is going to meet your, your, your need and, and that you're not going to be a craving for more and you're going to be content with what you have. And thirdly, the third bullet point here is not only will you uh, find uh, contentment, but you'll end up with more of what really matters. More of what really matters. Treasures in heaven. Treasures that are stored up. Proverbs 18, uh, Proverbs 8, verse 18 says, I have riches and honor as well as enduring wealth and justice. God goes on, my gifts are better than gold. Even the purest gold, my wage is better than sterling silver. God says, you'll get more of what really matters. So the first secret is put God first in everything. The second secret is an illustration. The second secret is I'm going to illustrate point number two. And point number two is what we call live by the triple 1070 principle. That's right. Triple 1070 principle. What? What is that? Well, let me tell you about it. The triple 1070 principle. This is how it works. The triple 1070 principle is you get paid. You get paid a hundred bucks. 10 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. You get paid 100 bucks. That might be your week salary. That might be your daily salary. <laughs> Reminds me of a funny joke. Uh, if you want God to bless you, give the tenth. If you don't want God's blessing, then ask God to give you what you tithe times 10. <laughs> 
Anyway, back to our 10, 20, 30. That might be your week's salary with what some tithe. I don't know. But 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. The triple 10 principle is this. I get paid. A hundred dollars, hundred dollars a day, week, whatever it is. Maybe that's my social security. Uh, maybe, you know, that's some kind of investment. Maybe that's a commission. Whatever it is, I get paid a hundred dollars. Well, the triple 10, 70 principle is the first 10% goes to God. I put God first. So the first 10 goes to God. I'm honoring God. In fact, Malachi chapter three, we were reading it. Back up in verse 8 says, will a man rob God? Rob God? Surely not. And yet you have robbed me. Well, what do you mean? When did we ever rob you? You have robbed me of the tithes and the offering do me. So God says, you got paid. You're supposed to return to me a tenth of what you've gotten paid. That belongs to me. But you've got a lot of bills this week. You forgot. Things are going on. You're in debt. There's things that are happening. Yeah, I just don't believe in tithe. So you don't give God his 10%. Malachi says, you're robbing me. You're saying, how am I robbing you? And God says, because you owe me a tenth of everything you got, but you didn't give it to me. Malachi goes on here to say, will a man rob a God? Surely not. And you have robbed me because you held it back and didn't give it to me. So the triple 10 says, God, I'm not going to rob you. The triple 10 is I'm going to put you first. The triple 10 is I want your blessings. I want to break God materialism. I want to live with contentment. The triple 10 says, God, I'm going to honor you in everything. So I'm going to put you first. The second 10 of the triple 10 is that I am going to pay off debt. So What we've been teaching you is that I'm going to give the second 10 to debt. Now, we taught you uh, last week the snowball. We dove deep into it Wednesday night and dove into the the snowball effect of of how to begin to attack debt. After that first 10% to God, you give 10% to attacking debt. The snowball says... Attack the the smallest bill first and pay them all down until the largest bill. Now, we're talking about non-house debt. Wednesday night, the main session in here dealt with that. If you weren't here, you can listen to that online. And you're going to attack debt. Now, a lot of people struggle in this area. And my encouragement to you is to automate. If you automate your giving, in fact, there's a flyer in your bulletin. If you automate your giving to God and you determine I'm going to automate it, I've automated my giving, I've automated my kingdom builders, because I want the first thing that happens every week is that I know I'm giving to God and the kingdom. And automation helps me not to forget it. Because we all know sometimes if we forget, then we spend it. Now we're going, "Uh uh-oh, I'm in trouble. And sometimes it just gets skipped. So I'm going to give to God. I'm going to automate it. I'm going to attack debt. And then thirdly, the third 10% is I'm going to go after savings. I'm going to go after savings or investment. So I'm going to begin to save. We said last week, you start with the oh no fun. What's the oh no fun is something breaks down, something happens and we go, oh no, how am I going to pay for this? Well, an oh no fun is that you don't have to put it on debt. You don't charge more to cover the broken, you know, water pipe. You don't charge more to fix the AC in the car. You have a fund that now you can use to pay that debt and uh, pay that bill and not go into a uh, debt. And by the way, A couple Wednesday nights ago, I talked about this. In savings, many of you have a company match at your employer, meaning that if you put $10, they'll match $10 up to a certain percentage. I had someone this week, he runs payar, uh, a payroll uh, in his HR department and for his company. And he said to me, Pastor, you you don't realize how many people leave money in the company match. They're not matching. And that's money you're leaving on the table. So if your company says that they'll match your retirement and you can put $100 and they give $100, they've given you a free $100 towards retirement. And you know what's really cool is it also reduces your taxes and you pay less taxes because you're beginning to save. Now on Wednesday night, 
We're going to deal more with this one. The last 70% goes to living expenses. Now, we taught you the I minus O equals easy budget, exactly zero bottom line. Last week, if you were here, you heard that. So, the last 70%, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 goes into my living expenses. Now, here's the problem. A lot of people, they're not saving. Their savings going into living. A lot of people are just getting deeper and deeper in debt, and they're not attacking their debt with an extra 10%. It's going into living. And unfortunately, a lot of Christians even are not tithing. Why? Is because it's going into the living bucket. And they're putting everything into the living bucket. And what we said earlier, the scripture says, that's a foolish man who spends everything they get and doesn't live by the triple 10, 70 principle. Triple 10. 10% goes to God, 10% I'm going to attack debt, 10% goes to savings. Now, someone said, well, what about when I pay off all my debt? That's a great question. Now you can roll that 10% right into the savings bucket, and now you can begin to continue to prepare for retirement. Good planning, look at the equation, hard work equals prosperity, and you begin to live within reason, which brings us to the last and final point, and that is then you get to enjoy the abundant life. Jesus says there's an abundant harvest, an abundant life when you live according to his principles. Now, Wednesday night, on the back of your outline, list three different seminars that we're going to help you practically to know how to live this out. In these final moments, as the team begins to play behind me, in these final moments, I want you to take that Tide Challenge card in your hand. Many of you have been filling it out already. And remember, you're going to take it to the lobby. You're going to give it to the ladies at the table. They're going to give you this big packet that has a, a special book inside of it, as well as some other things that will help you. If you're saying today, I'm going to begin tithing, I'm going to begin walking in obedience, but I want to pray a prayer of blessing over you today. With this in your hand, let me pray. Father, right now, I thank you for each one that's here. I thank you for their life. I thank you, Father, for for the commitments that they're making. And today we're making one of the most important commitments, one of the hardest commitments for believers to begin to live out. And that's the commitment to return to you a tenth, the tithe, a tenth of all of our income, to begin to walk in obedience, to put you first, to honor you. But God, you tell us in your word that when we do, blessing comes, supernatural contentment comes, and Father, when we do, we begin to, to live with a freedom and a peace like we've not had before. And today, I pray that something's a, awakened in our heart, our, our eyes are open, our spirits are open, and that, Father, we're going to walk in obedience to this principle. So today, I pray over each one that's filling out the Tide Challenge. For each one that's been trying to tithe, but they've been struggling, that as they take the 90-day commitment, for 90 days, they're going to test you. For 90 days, they're going to say, God, I want you to prove yourself. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I, my budget doesn't seem like I can do it. But God, today, I'm going to honor you. And I'm going to make this step. And as they do, I pray, God, that supernaturally, you begin to bring things into alignment. Supernaturally, God, peace will begin to come. And just as we heard in the testimony, God, you'll begin to arrange things that in the natural, in the logic, doesn't seem like it's possible, doesn't, doesn't understand. We don't understand how it, it's even working, but, but yet we begin to see your favor. Like this young couple, they were able to buy a house much larger than they ever thought they could. Why? Because you blessed. Why? Because you arranged things. You, you brought things together because we can never outgive you. And when we honor you with the tithe, Father, your blessings flow in such a great way that we can't even contain it. God, I pray for that over this body. I pray for that over the church. And for each new tither, 
for each individual that takes this challenge, I pray you'll reveal it to them. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand with me as our team closes us in a song? My hallelujah belongs to you. Can we declare that in this place this afternoon? Can we sing? My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it all, Lord. My hallelujah say. It belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah. My hallelujah to you. Can we declare that he deserves it all? We sing, you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. All of my quick things just to give everyone um, some updates as before we uh, uh, head out. Those of you who are taking the tithe challenge, please feel free to grab that card that you had and head out to those doors. In the center of the lobby, you'll see a table there that you can be able to go and pick up your packet at that specific time. So please don't miss that. Also, uh, we're also going to be uh, going deeper into this uh, financial seminar every Wednesday night. So this Wednesday night coming up, we're gonna be going deep. We have topics such as buying a new home, what are my options, and how to be financially fit in a society driven by greed and materialism. You do not wanna miss that. This Wednesday at 7.15 p.m., you can meet right in here. If you have teens and uh, children, uh, you can bring them as well because we have a special service for them in the Family Life Center that they can be a part of as well. So don't miss it this Wednesday. And also, um, if you want to meet our new pastors uh, at the end of the service, head to your right, the open area, the Connection Center. They'll be there. You can greet them and perhaps get to know them as well as they uh, are now being invited here uh, in our family this morning. Amen. Let's go ahead and say our closing prayer loud and proud. Say, Father, help us, help us to be the people in the church you have called us to be. A people that always build up and never tear down, that always encourage and never discourage. A people in the church that take a message of hope everywhere we go, to everyone we meet. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you go. You deserve it.